I think it's mostly that I felt really stupid for a fucking long time. Mm. <laughs> like, what, 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 why did you feel stupid and how does that come into writing? <laughs> so I had a really bad speech impediment. Mm. Uh, and I've had, I think, uh, maybe $35,000 worth of vocology lessons. Oh, wow. Did it work? I, did it help you a lot? I mean, I sound okay now. Sound, you sound great. Unless I sound like total shit. No, but, um, but I mean, you never, I mean, not to bring any sort of thing into you, it's like, people have told me I talk weird. You do. I do? No, you don't. No, thing. you're I don't fine. Know. No, you're no, fine. No, 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 no. <laughs> Apparently I do, but it hasn't, it, it's kind of a weird thing. Like I, maybe I should fix it, but on the other hand, I've made my living talking. Yeah. So it can't be that bad, right? For me, it was really bad. I had a very bad stutter. Yeah. And it's also a genetic, because my mom has a mm. bit of a stutter. My uncle has a bit of a stutter. Mm. I have the worst one, by, mm. I, by far. Could not get a bloody word out. Really? Uh, yeah, for sure. And then I grew up like with braces and glasses, mm. and also was kind of chubsy. Mm. So man, it was rough going. Sarah. You were like all five of the the powers combined. All or of them, but, but like, <laughs> you know? for like a shit. <laughs> but I, I I'll find that like conventional attractiveness and conventional beauty can mm -hmm. oftentimes inform your competence mm -hmm. or your perceived competence. People will think you're stupid if you're not pretty enough to say that you're smart. Mm. So I knew that I was smart, but there was no way of me proving that. Interesting. And then if people were like, you're stupid, I had no words to be able to correct it mm. either. So I felt kind of like almost I had a, a sort of cognitive or imaginatory like locked in syndrome. I had yeah. no way to prove my worth except mm. for I was like, well, a pen can't stutter on me. Mm. So I think I just used that as the only way to communicate with the world. And then via doing that, I was like, no, I'm actually really good at this. Mm. And then um, as is the case with any coming of age story, I became very close with my English teachers. Mm. Um, because the way that I was on the outside did not match what I was putting down on the page. Mm. And I think that that was surprising for a lot of people and that caused a bit of intrigue. And then I was like, oh, I'm intriguing. Mm. Are people curious about me? Kind of like, so you can kind of like focus on where you're getting, where you're getting the uh, like positive reinforcement from. Yes. Mm -hmm. People definitely suddenly had interest in me in a way that they never, I mean, in a way that I was so fundamentally disregarded. Mm. Um, and it was, it was really, it was quite, um, it was shocking mm. and it was great. And I felt so good about it. Do you it. feel like now looking back at sort of the, the way in, do you think that it's ultimately a, a good thing that those were your, your initial reasons for coming into doing writing? Or are you thinking now like, oh, well like, you know, it wasn't like you weren't smart if you didn't write. Yeah. You know, is it, how do you feel about that now? I feel kind of two ways about it. On one hand, because I also was a really late reader. I was basically illiterate till I was like eight. Mm. Cause there wasn't, no one really gave a shit about me. Mm. I kind of felt like if I lived or died, would anyone notice? Mm. You know, this, this, I mean, that's like a very dramatic way of putting it, but hey, I'm an artist, I'm like, yeah. let me have that. But at the time, that's how you felt. Kind of, I just kind of felt like I am, at, at best, I should be convenient for others. Mm. But it doesn't matter what I want, it doesn't matter who I am, it doesn't matter any of these things, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. There's a weird flip to that, the service, like you want to be of service to others, I think that's a good thing, but to need to be of service to others, that's not like, you know, you want to have more self, uh, uh, like, you know, self-worth is not the right word, but like to be able to insist that for yourself is a challenge and it's something that a lot of people never get there. <laughs> I, I think it's like ultimately a very hideous thing to make somebody's value be uh, based upon their convenience to others mm -hmm. um, because I have my own life and I will be self-possessed within it. Mm -hmm. And and I, I, I think my, my value is based upon the impact I have upon my life and others, mm. not the convenience and not how easy it is to run roughshod over me and sure. sort of thing. So I was like, okay, like, that's just not how it's going to be for me. And I, and I just don't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I picked up a pen. And then over time, I realized that putting, putting words to things solidifies my, uh, my reality. Mm -hmm. like, kind of like if I feel bad about something, I'm not sure why I feel bad about it, but if I can write it out, then I, I can sort of put together yeah. what is creating this thing that I don't like yeah. or what I do like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's also the writing, I find that writing anything, whether it's a story that I really just need to get out of my head or whether it's like, okay, podcast recording at 1 p.m., whatever it is, it, it, it frees up the room in my head to think about other things. Yeah. You know, the writing is um, really therapeutic in that way. Very therapeutic. You know? I mean, I remember it was, it was really, it only got, it was, I think, my, my sort of like junior or senior year of high school. I finally got to the point where I had too many things going on that I just couldn't keep it all in my own head, and I started to have a schedule and tried mm -hmm. to do this. And it doesn't come naturally to me at all because I have ADHD and I'm all over the place. 
So like, but forcing myself to be able to like kind of schedule stuff, you know, to-do list sort of things. These are very basic tools, but it was shocking how effective it was. Um, even if I didn't achieve more, even if I didn't do the things on the to-do list, I felt better because I had made the list and it was now out of my head. Yeah. And then of course with storytelling and the cool thing about it is if you do that every day continually, eventually you have a story and now the thing that's out of your head is actually interesting to other people too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. so that was kind of part of the, the way that you got in, into the writing. Mm 